Galatians 2. So let's go to Ephesians 2. I think we can do uh, Ephesians 2, then Galatians 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and uh, verse 4. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. So what he's saying is, is that while they were dead in transgressions, meaning uncircumcised, meaning having nothing, doing nothing wrong, Christ was raised from the dead, uh, Gentiles believed in him, and they were made alive with Christ, meaning that they live above the mortality of the flesh, and they in their flesh as full humans have been completely circumcised from having a life born from the flesh. That it is that is what he is saying he did this while we were in transgressions so i want to say to you you might feel that you have a transgression somewhere in your life and that because of that transgression you don't have access to um the joy and peace of god now let me tell you something and i want to use my own example here and um just take it as it is i don't have my life born from if I wrote a right word or a wrong word in a letter. Let's say I'm 100% wrong and even in the, uh, in, in the other court it's found that I'm wrong. Is that going to now disqualify me from having joy and peace? No. <laughs> I'm going to have joy and peace anyway. Why? Because God has given me, listen to this, and has given unto us, it says here, that because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. So life could come even when people were dead in transgressions. That means that I'm not living anymore from should I commit any transgression in this world not that i'm aiming for a transgression not that the grace of god promotes transgression but should it be that there is a transgression it does not mean that i have now been condemned to guilt and feeling bad and uh, uh, crying and feeling my life falls apart for the rest of my life no my life is not falling apart because christ is not falling apart neither is yours there are people that, I've been, that, that I speak to and the most terrible things happen to them. They go through the most difficult times. Much more difficult than what Eliana and I went through in the last uh, two and a half years. And especially this last week. And the, in those difficult times, God gives them life. This morning there was somebody here who had a stroke. This man is so passionate for the gospel. And the stroke affected his eyes. It's not that he is blind, but his eyes cannot stand still. So it just goes like, like this. He, it just, he, he cannot control the movement of his eyes all the time. And you can imagine how frustrating that is. And then he cannot see clearly as well. And there's nothing that they can basically do for the man. And him, he, in that situation lives a life of Colossians where it says and I'm reading it again it's so powerful your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off that whole self that whole man where his life would have been ruled by the mortality of his body has been taken away even his body even the cells of his body has got the hope of the glorious word of God that speaks into his flesh Hallelujah. <laughs> that is absolute good news. Glory to God. Let's go back to uh, Ephesians. Well, I was in Galatians, but let us just see. Um, I want to, let, let us go to first to Ephesians.
Let's read this again. It says, It is by grace that you have been saved, by the resurrection. It's by the glorification that comes to physical body, to the point that we are now living from the rulership that he has over death in the physical body. And that we, even though we have dying bodies, don't live by the rule of the dying body. And even our dying body is now put under the rule of Christ from where we will live. Verse 6, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in heavenly realms. Heavenly realms means in the realm of the immortal. That's what it means. In Christ Jesus, in order. Why did He do all of this? That in the coming ages He might show the incomparable riches of His grace expressed in His kindness to us in Christ. So what he's basically saying is that he has done this so that in the ages to come, that for eternity, he might express his kindness continually in us. Glory to God. Isn't that absolutely amazing? (laughs) Oh, that is absolute good news. Nothing that anybody gives you can add anything to you. And nothing that anybody takes from you can take anything away from you. And I want to testify about that. This is such a powerful testimony. It's, it's, it says, and we're running out of time, so I, I wanted to do another verse, but we're going to just do the testimony. You know, when, when it happened that I was at the place where it looks as if I'm going to lose, you know, all of my belongings, I felt in my heart, What the Bible talks about, the purity of faith. (laughs) What that means is, the, the purity of faith, let's take this ring, this ring here. This is a silver ring. I bought it. I'm sure it is truly silver. I believe it's silver. The person that I bought it from is a very reliable person. They say it's silver. I can test it, and I'm sure some of you will now quickly write five things on how to test if it's truly silver. I can believe it's silver, but the authenticity of what I believe is not determined by how hard I concentrate on this ring or how much I'm persuaded that it's silver. The authenticity of what I believe is found in if this is silver or not. Should this be tested and it be pointed out as silver, the test has revealed what this truly is. So, when I was in a situation where I felt we're losing everything, I felt this many times in my life. I felt when that happened, it is, I felt that eternal life in me and that nothing can be taken from me. And as I felt that, I was driving in my car and I said, glory to the almighty God. (laughs) I'm happy. I feel so free. My freedom is true. You know, as you live this life, and you experience the provision of the Lord, and you find you've got a car, you've got a house, you've got this, you've got that. Some of you that's got businesses, you've got successful business, things are going well. It might be that your mind starts to tell you that the joy that you have is because of the stuff. But you know what happens when you lose the stuff, or you're at the point where you see you're truly losing this? You as a believer in this gospel of grace, you will find that you're equally happy because that's when the authenticity of what you believe, which is that Christ was truly raised from the dead, that his body is truly immortal, that you are truly not governed by the the death that's in the flesh, and that even your flesh rests in the knowledge of eternal life. That's what this is about. Glory to God. That is absolute good news. What was God saying from before the world began? 
God was saying from before the world began, he was saying and that he wanted to bring forth a man and a woman or humans with whom he can share his life. So well, there was never a point where you were in God's mind outside of God having full contribution from his side wherein all that you would be and have would be solely by him, through him and unto him which is the vision that he would share his life with you. It was never a point where it was not about God giving to you. It was never about you giving to God. It has always been about God giving to you. And the way wherein we give to God is we give to Him that His will be done in us by believing and trusting upon Him. The message which he had from before the world began was then shown forth what he truly intended when Jesus was raised from the dead. And he said, this is what a son of God looks like. And this is what I've been saying about you all the time. You are my son. And I will bring you into this. You believe me. If the world doesn't know you, if the world treats you like dirt, if they don't have any knowledge about who you are. It's just because they don't know God. That's all. And may they know God. Hallelujah. Well, that is the message that I wanted to share with you today. And I trust that this has blessed you. I want to testify to you. Don't fear. Don't fear. Doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what negative, even that thing that you, that you hope it doesn't happen, even if it happens, the fear that there was that if that happens, then you're not going to have life. Let me tell you, on the other side of the sentence is life, <laughs> is the joy of God, man, is the absolute life of God. On the other side of that is sharing in the abundance of the goodness and the joy of the Lord. Is God's faithfulness shown towards you continually. Hallelujah. I can testify of that. Glory to God. I would like to pray for you. Father, I want to thank you that I could pray, that I can pray for people right now. And I thank you that I can sit here. And as I preach this message, I feel your word. I feel your life. I feel your abundance. I feel your truth. I feel your basically uh, carefree living whereby you are saturated with life and you have brought us into that life. Glory to God. Father, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your life. I thank you for your abundance. I thank you, Lord, like this one lady said to me this morning, that the negative things that happen to us, we can sometimes put it up on a wall and frame it. And it will be a reminder of how you have even given us life in that situation. Thank you, Lord. We think of the Jews as they were, were, were brought out of Egypt. And after they were brought out, there was to be a remembrance made of that day when they were in Egypt and you brought them out. Thank you for your love and your goodness and your kindness. Thank you for how you care for us. You are the Almighty God and we love you. For you first loved us and you loved us in granting us life even if there's transgression and you love us to the point that even overcome our transgression and bring forth the fruit of the spirit in us where we forgive and we love thank you for your goodness O oh god amen and amen i want to thank you that i could serve you with this good news message we will then gather again next sunday thank you for joining me next sunday service god bless